Jamie Dimon, the big cheese owner at JP Morgan Chase, is like the Yoda of the financial world. He's seen it all, done it all and probably has a snazzy lightsaber hidden somewhere in his office. Now you might be thinking, what can we really learn from this head honcho of America's largest bank? Well, a lot. Jamie isn't just balancing checkbooks and sipping on lattes in his corner office. Oh no, he's got his hands in everything. And we mean everything. With more than 60 million customers, a workforce of over 300,000 global champs, and business ventures that could make your head spin faster than a roller coaster. When Jamie Dimon starts talking about the economy, you bet we are all ears. Especially when he sits down for a 30-minute deep dive into why he thinks we're cruising through the most treacherous economic waters in decades. Before we dive into the juicy bits, we have a little disclaimer. Predicting the economy is like predicting the weather. Jamie himself says JP Morgan Chase is like a weatherman, ready for snow, rain or even a surprise hailstorm. So here's the deal, nobody has a crystal ball for the economy. But today we've got the man himself, Jamie Dimon dropping knowledge bombs. First things first, according to Jamie, the economy is like weather and people are playing a guessing game. But you know what, that's a rookie move. It might snow, it might rain, it might get icy. Just like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. But JP Morgan Chase is prepared for the whole shebang. Now Jamie in his CEO throne sees the good, the bad and the ugly of the economic landscape. And in his recent talk, he's throwing shade at those who scream from the rooftops that everything is all sunshine and rainbows. Stocks are soaring, the economy is doing the cha-cha and people are high-fiving over low unemployment rates. But Jamie Dimon is about to burst the bubble. He's not buying the everything is fantastic narrative, nope. He's got a front row seat to the headwinds approaching and he's here to spill the beans. We basically had a shot of economic adrenaline straight into our veins and Jamie calls it fiscal stimulation. It's like the largest injection we've ever had in peacetime. Think of it as the financial red bull for the economy. But hold up, there's another player in the game, the largest monetary stimulation. Yup, two different stimulations, two different effects and together they're running through our system like a double shot of espresso. Now, Jamie wants us to imagine this is a bit of a drug-induced sugar high. We're all riding the wave of this economic ecstasy, but it's extremely important to remember that this isn't a natural high. It's not the result of some economic protein shake or kale smoothie. No sir, this is the consequence of Uncle Sam and the central bank playing hero in the economic movie. Since March of 2020, the government and the central bank have been playing Superman, swooping in to assist Americans and kicking the economic can down the road. Hold on because there's a jaw-dropping stat. The Federal Reserve has printed around $4 trillion since 2020. That's like monopoly money falling into the laps of everyday citizens and businesses. It's catch-up time. All that money didn't magically turn us into economic wizards. It just gave us a temporary boost. Now years down the track, reality is knocking on a dose. Consumers have burned through their savings boost and their household balance sheets are feeling the squeeze. Don't be fooled by the headlines screaming about the corporate profits soaring to the moon. Sure, they're up, but why? People are tossing money around and where did they get that money? The government handed it in. Jamie's throwing shade at the misconception that everything's peachy keen just because corporate profits are up. The reality is when the spending spree stops, profits might take a nosedive. So here's Jamie's worry, we're in the midst of a sugar high and most of us don't even realize it. It feels great at the moment, but the crash is inevitable. The big question hanging in the air, will this end in a soft landing or a chaotic nosedive? Let's rewind a bit to the good old days of 2020 and 2021. Americans were like squirrels stashing away nuts, saving a solid 15-30% to 30 of their income. Fast forward to today and the savings rate is looking more dismal than a rainy picnic day. We're talking about 2-4% to savings, the lowest since 2008. Ouch, right? Why the change? Blame it on the rising interest rates. As they climb up, things like mortgages become pricier, gobbling up more of your hard-earned cash in interest payments. Translation, less money in your pocket, fewer shopping sprees and businesses feeling the pinch. It's like a financial domino effect and it's not as sugary sweet as the economic candy land some folks might think. Now Jamie's not just playing the role of a town crier. He's got a solution up his sleeve. Ease the squeeze on consumers by bringing those interest rates back down. Simple, right? Well, not so fast. The tricky part, according to Jamie and his financial buddy Ray Dalio, is that there might not be a major interest rate reprieve in the cards anytime soon. According to Jamie, capital requirements are the unsung heroes of the financial world. But governments worldwide are breaking records with the biggest deficits and debts in history. 
Now, Ray Dalio, who's been shouting from the financial rooftops that the massive US deficit is like a hungry beast needing to sell tons of bonds to foreign investors. However, here's the catch. The appetite for US treasuries is fading faster than last year's fashion trends. So what's the solution? Keep those interest rates up to sweeten the deal for buyers. But the list of reasons why rates might stay up includes the need for more government moolah. The green economy is hungry, the European energy situation demands cash, and the restructuring of global trade is throwing money into the mix. Oh, and let's not forget the world's remilitarization, which is inflationary. Jamie's not hitting the panic button just yet, but he's serving up a reality check. Brace yourselves because there are dangerous and inflationary storms brewing on the economic horizons. It's like he's telling us to pack an umbrella, not because the rain is pouring, but because it might. His main message, stay grounded folks, don't float off into the la-la land. Jamie's not painting an economic doomsday scenario, but he's saying, hey, be prepared. It's like a life lesson from your wise grandparent. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. We appreciate Jamie's approach here. He's not screaming economic hurricane, but he's calmly reasoning through the points. It's like he's the financial Gandalf, guiding us through Middle Earth and warning us about potential dark clouds on the horizon. His mantra at JP Morgan seems to be all about being prepared for anything the economy throws away. Jamie's not talking about deficits and debts. He's dropping truth bombs about global conflicts. According to him, we're sailing through the most dangerous economic waters in decades. And there is more to it than just economic factors. The Russia-Ukraine conflict, according to Jamie, isn't just about geopolitical tensions. It's a real game-changer for the economy. Energy commodities are taking hits. Oil prices are doing the cha-cha and food costs are sky-high. Now add this geopolitical spice to the existing cocktail of pandemic-induced inflation and high interest rates. It's not just a sugar high anymore. It's a roller coaster with unexpected turns. Jamie's not yelling economic hurricane, but he's subtly reminding us to stay alert because these potential trigger points can lead to a chain reaction. And then there is the heavyweight match, the US versus China. Jamie, who practically does business in his sleep, isn't shaking in his financial boots about a future conflict. He's like, hey, we've got all the essentials, food, war, energy, and two big oceans protecting us. Plus, he throws in a casual nod to the great relationship with our neighbors Mexico and Canada. But here's the kicker, every nation has its own national security interests. For the US, it's semiconductors. For Europe, it's energy. Jamie's not predicting smooth sailing, but he's optimistic that nations will act in their interests without escalating into a full-blown conflict. However, the wild card in this global poker game is Taiwan. If things go south in Taiwan, all bets are off. Jamie's not painting a rosy picture. He's straight up saying it would be a major depression and no one wants that. But in the unpredictable world of geopolitics, He's urging us to be prepared. In a nutshell, Jamie's not sounding the panic alarm, but he's reminding us to keep our economic life jackets handy. It's like preparing for a storm. You might not know when it'll hit you, but having a plan is the smart move. So, fellow economic adventurer, what are your thoughts on Jamie's global economic update? Do you agree, disagree, or have your own theories? Share your wisdom down in the comments. Stay savvy, stay prepared, and we will catch you in the next video, where we unravel more economic mysteries with our financial Sherpa, Jamie Diamond. Cheers!